Ladies and gentlemen, this Until Dawn conversation is bringing up a lot that is ripe for discussion. I'm happy to have the conversation because there is the technical side of this whole thing that I'm quite aware of. And I've always encouraged fellow gamers like, hey, man, we need to dial into understanding how these games are made and how they work, what they require. But a lot of gamers have, you know, straight up said, we don't care about how these games are made. What I do find interesting, though, is as much as gamers will say they don't really care, you know, how these games are made. Most of them will conclude that a game should be somehow because of something. But then when you point out the technical side, it's a problem. Now, I've seen a few comments based on these videos, and I think it's very interesting. So what I want to do is I want to bring some of the technical side to the discussion, because when I first had this conversation, it was about the weakness of the consoles back then. That was what that was the premise that I started with. Now, it's a matter of PlayStation is actually bringing a 30 FPS game with Until Dawn and no one is complaining. But when other games came, people complained. But some people are trying to parse this to say, well, a game like Until Dawn shouldn't require 30 FPS, but other games should require, you know, 60 FPS. I agree. However, what I'm saying is from a technical perspective, a game like Until Dawn has no reason being 30 FPS because the game is not so resource heavy compared to these other games. And I'll go ahead and show you from the technical side what I mean. I got two comments. Shout out to you, uh, Connell17. You said... Yes, I'm one of those guys who complained about Gotham Knights being 30 FPS because I don't give a hoot about the remake of Until Dawn. I already played the game before. And action games, 1080 to 1440, should be standard 60 FPS. I agree with you. I am not disagreeing with you. And they said, I don't even care about 4K, but games like Walking Dead and Until Dawn could be 30 FPS. I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. I would, I wouldn't, I would care much because of the type of game. And question is, Until Dawn, even a AAA game? That's not the point. All this talk about is the game a AAA game or whatever? No, don't bring that into the conversation simply because a game like Until Dawn, whether it's a AAA game or not a AAA game, the game is a game where you walk around and push QTEs. Are you freaking kidding me that this kind of game is, is resource heavy compared to a game like Gotham Knights when you're firing animations and VFX all over the place? This is where the technical side comes in, and this is where I'm not going to keep my mouth shut because... Again, we gamers will be doing will be doing the most sometimes when we say, OK, let's sit down and have the technical conversation. Everybody starts to call everybody names. And the person said, I stopped listening when this guy said that a game like this, like said uh, a game should have 60 FPS over an action game like Gotham Knights. That's not what I said. I said a game like Until Dawn should more than likely have 60 FPS because it is not as resource heavy as Gotham Knights. How do I know I use Unreal Engine? If you fire animations in Unreal Engine, if you fire VFX, if you fire AI, and I've shown this stuff years ago, actually, the game is going to require more energy, more juice from the hardware to run it than a game that you're walking around that's literally a QTE fest. Like, literally, how many animations are you running outside of the, you know, the vast array of cinematics that Until Dawn has? A game like Gotham Knights got four main characters that all have different animations that fire differently. They all have their skill sets. They have different AI classes that behave differently. All of this is asking you for juice, asking you for memory. In 20, you know, I think I can't remember what year. Some Outriders game came out and people were asking why this game was not, you know, a single player game. Why the game was actually hosted everything online. Keep in mind that Gotham Knights is hosted offline. A lot of what it does is hosted on your system. And a developer from Ubisoft Massive who made the Division 1 back then and Division 2 came out and said, hey, one of the reasons we did it in a division, he was like, I don't know about Outriders, but one of the reasons we hosted the whole game for the Division Online was simply because we knew that the 2013 laptop level CPU in the PS4 could not deal with running a lot of those processes on, you know, on the same hardware. So we separated it. AI and a bunch of things are run on a server, and some other things are run on your console. In the case of Gotham Knights, games fully 100% playable on your console, you have a little bit of server interaction when you do you know, co-op, and the co-op is untethered. Even with my 4090, when somebody joins my untethered session, the game sees a little bit of a drop in performance. This is one of the reasons co-op in Baldur's Gate 3 almost did not allow for the game to come in the Xbox platform at all because of the Series S being much lower grade hardware. So at the end of the day, when you kind of think about it, you already have the technical 
examples, you have the anecdotes, you have everything in front of you, but a lot of gamers refuse because they, in a sense, misinterpret what is being said. I understand. It looks like a call out because, you know, if you complained about Gotham Knights back then, now another game is sitting in front of you. And then I'm pointing out these videos. It seems like I'm calling you out. And yes, I am calling out those gamers. Don't get me wrong. But when you give your reasoning, at least try to give a reasoning that, you know, follows exactly the argument that I've made rather than miscategorize my argument. In this one scene alone that you've watched, do you see how many VFX have fired from this? Every time you do a perfect hit, the game has to account, has this person done a perfect hit and fire a specific, you know, a specific visual effect to cue you into how you do your combos. Every character here can run, walk, you know, idle, all of that. All of that is asking for resources from your machine. Look at all this fire. <laughs> it's crazy that they put that in this particular scene. But every time you get a better machine, the game will run at 60 FPS. In fact, somebody in the comment section for one of you know the videos just now said until Dawn was unlocked for them, they ran the game at like, you know, anywhere from 60 to 100 FPS at 1440, but they're using a beefy computer. That's basically the point that I'm making. So until Dawn should not be given an exception for anything because it's even a poor case if anybody tries to say, well, an action game should have 60 FPS. I agree, but... Mm -mm. To say that Until Dawn doesn't need FPS, dance, hence the action game is, you know, should be criticized more than Until Dawn is a poor argument. Simply because from a technical perspective, that doesn't even make any sense. Look at fire everywhere. Like, you know, do you know how, how much fire costs in Unreal Engine 4? <laughs> oh my goodness. Please. I think we should have this conversation from a place where we're actually dialing into the technical side. No longer are we going to be sitting here talking like some people were trying to say, oh, well, you know, back in the day, gamers were expecting 60 FPS and they didn't know any better. We've, we're four years into the console generation now. We already know better. We already have a lot more information. And that's my stance on the issue. I'm not concerned whether or not you think Starfield was, you know, marketed as this big magnum opus or Hellblade. I've been seeing all these comments. I've made the videos about them. They're just excuses. And I will not, I will not not call them or point them out. I'm sorry. Delete the channel, but the truth has got to be said. And this is, the, this is probably, why, <laughs> probably why I don't ask anybody to subscribe because, man, I am not interested in actually tickling anybody's ears. After all of what we did in 2022, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested for us to dig in and find the truth. So here's, what's here's what the reality is. PlayStation is getting let off the hook for Until Dawn, and all these excuses are being given, and other games that did not do 60 FPS are getting dragged, and people are actually using the wrong argument to even explain it. Instead of just saying, like I've said, 30 FPS is fine. Believe you me, and I haven't even done the Avowed video yet because I'm waiting for Avowed to come out. It may come out at 30, it may come out at 60. But you guys know how Avowed got mocked and laughed at and dragged, right? Aha. So let's all maintain similar energy levels when we're doing that. It's not allowed that you actually criticize one game and then you jump on another game. And then when you get pointed out like, hey, man, why are you having a double standard? You start explaining the double standard when in reality, the technical reason, which is behind it, don't even allow for you to explain that direction. You got to pick a different route to go. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you guys so much. Hit me up in the, th in the comment section. Peace out.